Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 14th, 1945, and the title is Omaha Wire. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. faithful Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver... The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? A single oil lamp burned dimly in the one-room shack that served as home for Dave Roberts and his grizzled old friend, Pug Wilson, while they worked on their tunnel. I suppose we ought to put the lamp out and save oil, huh, Pug? Uh, thunderation. We can talk just as well in the dark. Save oil, save food, save on digging tools. Doggone it all day. I know. This business of trying to hit the pay dirt on a shoestring gets under my skin. We ain't got the right tools. We ain't got powder. Doggone it, we ain't even got enough to eat. Look at the slack in my pants. I ain't eating enough. It won't be much longer. Uh, never in all my born days have I tried to scratch ground with less grub steak. Not even when I was partners with Lucky Thornton. Gosh. Lucky Thornton sure struck it rich, didn't he? He sure did. They tell me that his mine on the other side of the hill is one of the best in the state. Well, he deserves it. He's a good hombre. Pug, uh, did you and Lucky have trouble? You mean because we split up? Yeah. No, no. We didn't have no trouble... We weren't getting anywhere as partners, so we decided to split and try our hand single. We left as friends. I see. Lucky struck it rich, and I batted around for a while, then come close to drowning when I fell in the river. <laughs> you fished me out and saved my life. You know the rest. We decided to travel double harness. It's a darn shame you didn't stick to Lucky. <laughs> I'm afraid you made a mistake teaming with me. Oh, now, Dave, hold on, hold on. Don't mind the complaining I was doing. I don't mean nothing by that. It isn't that, Pug. It's just that we're awful close to the deadline. If we don't hit the pay dirt before the first of the month, we're through. Well, we'll hit it. Doggone you. Just see if we don't. I know the signs. I know when there's pay dirt close by. We'll see the... What's that? Explosion. I seen the flash. It's the tunnel. But there was no powder. Oh, get out of my way. 
Our turtle's caving. Ouch! Oh, Dad, wrap those rocks. Wait for me. i got to put my boots on. I'll see you at the tunnel. Oh, doggone. Where's my boots? Where are they? Where are them dead blasted things? Oh, under the bunk. No. Get them on, Diablo. Now. What the? You are here. Breathe on it. What are you doing here? Did you set that blaze? So, you know so much. I don't no, tell no. You what... Shout and I will use his gun. Well, you ornery, greasy faced, double distilled polecat. Hey, what you doing with our oil can? Keep it over. So. Oh, why, you buzzard faced skunk? Uh... I warn you, senor, it's your own fault. Oh, you polecat. I threw the lamp on the floor where the oil is spilling. <laughs> now I must go. Hey, Bert! What's up? <laughs> Adios, hombres. The shack burned fiercely, spreading a red glow over the hillside. Dave rushed in, found Pug Wilson on the floor, and carried the old man out of the inferno. Get you out, Pug. Seconds later, the shack collapsed. Ranger, Dan, and Tonto had been in the valley. They heard the explosion. A moment later, they saw the flames and started toward them. From a distance, they saw the shack collapse amid a shower of sparks. When they came near, they saw Dave crouch beside a still form on the ground. Dave leaped to his feet as the horseman reined up. Oh, Silver, oh, let's go. Oh, now. Did you come back to see how well you did your job? We came to fight a fire, and I guess we're too late. How badly is that man hurt? He was shot. You ought to know. Don't let this mask mislead you. Let me look at your friend. I'll see here. I'll bring your canteen. Uh, he got it. He's still alive. What can I do? Bring a couple of torches from that fire so Tonto can see what he's doing. Right. See here. What's the idea? Your friend's been shot, hasn't he? Well, yes, You've but... He's shirt away, but he needs more than that. But does that Indian know how to treat him? Tonto knows what he's doing. Here's a couple of burning sticks. I'll get more. All right, Dan. Put them right there. We were in the valley when we heard the blast. Now, okay, Kimasabi, look yes. who feller is. Pug Wilson. Do you know him? Thornton's old partner. Who are you? Where did you know Pug? Our trails once crossed. Who are you? The name's Roberts, Dave Roberts. Pug's been my partner. You don't know who shot him? The same one that wrecked our tunnel and fired our shack. When I saw the mask, You suspected I... us? Yes. Have you any other suspicions? I thought maybe you'd been hired for the job by a woman that lives in Omaha. She's the one that owns this land. Don't you own it? No. When Pug thought it was gold-bearing land, we didn't have cash enough to buy it. The best we could do was a deal to buy it if it shows pay dirt. We got an option on it. Oh, I see. Hey, dirty, triple, twisted, farmer. Pug. Double distilled half-breed polecat. Half-breed? Take it easy, Pug. You're going to be all right. There's plenty of time to talk. Hey, uh, hey, Dave. Dave, where are right you? Right here, Pug. What's this mean? Who's the redskin? Who's the mass man? We met once before, Pug. You may not remember. Pug, I, uh, I guess these people want to help us. The Indian fixed your wound. Her voice. I can remember the voice. Was it a half-breed who shot you? I seen him. I seen the sidewinder. It was Breed Arnett. Arnett? Do you know him? He hangs out around town, the town of Gillespie. So he's the one who did this. If we can just prove that. Do you think the woman in Omaha hired him? She must have. Who else would want to keep us from striking pay dirt? Huh. What about our tunnel? Was that blast a bad one? Uh, it was mighty bad, Pug. Oh, all our work gone for nothing. Dave... Have we got any chance at all? We can tell better when we clear away the mouth of the tunnel. I'll go into Gillespie and ask Mr. Feeney to lend us a little more cash for tools. Tools all gone, too? They were inside the tunnel, what few we had. Oh, Feeney. Tight-fisted, skinflint. Licked. That's what we are. Licked. <sighs> Pug. Wait, Pug. What? What's the matter with him? Him all right. Only weak. Let him sleep, Dave. He'll be better for it. I I had to tell him the true facts. He he won't stand for well, anything. That's all right. Are you dealing with Feeney? Yeah, the money lender in Gillespie. Why? Do you know him? I have heard of him. We needed cash to get an option on this land. Feeney was satisfied that it looked like a good risk. So he let us borrow cash enough for the option and a few tools. Didn't he demand a lot of security? Oh, well, instead of security, we gave him a half interest in the claim. Half interest? Yeah. 
Pug and I have the other half. And you do all the work. Well, if the claim turns out as well as we hoped, we'd be well enough off. Dave, who was to pay for the land if you took up the option? Why, that's easy. If we struck the gold, we'd pay for the land with the gold we dug. That's why we've got to get it before the first of the month. You think you can do it? I don't know, but we're going to try. Pug Wilson won't be of much help for the next week. I know it. I'll see Feeney in the morning. He'll have to let me have some more cash. Maybe I can hire a few men to give me a hand. Then you and Toto might as well unpack your horses. You can make a shelter. All right. Now wait here until I get back. Well, where are you going? I'm going to see if Breed Arnez is in Gillespie. Steady, boy. You're going there now? Yes, yeah, steady. Mon Silver! Some time later, the Lone Ranger reined up in the darkness behind the buildings on Gillespie's only street. With deft speed, he removed the mask and rubbed his face with a stain that gave him the complexion of a Mexican. Old clothes from the saddlebags completed the disguise. Wait here, Silver. With a word to his horse, the mysterious figure made his way between two buildings, then stepped casually into the street. A moment later, the disguised Lone Ranger was in the nearest cafe. Well, what's yours, stranger? Buenas tardes, senor. I, I'm looking for the senor Arnez. You perhaps have seen him, no? Oh, he doesn't come in here much. Uh, you might try the Silver Crescent. Oh? It's down uh, that way a bit. Right across the street from Simon Feeney's office. <laughs> gracias, senor. Gracias. You'll see the sign. It's the Silver Crescent. What do you want to find him? Oh, it isn't important. Well, you can't know him very well. You'll be talking to him right now. No, muy bien, senor. He is here, no? Well, he's right over there. Fact is, he's just to leave it. Bueno. Hasta la vista. That was on, Ez. He's going out the front door. Oh, I will see him outside. Muchas gracias, senor. As the Lone Ranger stepped into the street, he saw Arnez crossing toward the building where Sime Feeney, the moneylender, had his home and office. The crack of a pistol split the night. Hey, you stand where you are! Where's Arnez? He's been shot! That printer was gunning for him! Get that man! He was looking for Breed! Well, fire! Get after him! Realizing that capture would mean discovery of the fact that he was disguised, the Lone Ranger raced, crouched low for his horse. Hold on! Oh, no, we'll fire! Let him have it! Shoot! Go on! He's gone between the buildings! Keep after him! There he goes! He's heading for that horse! The critter will get away! It's about time someone told me what was happening. It's about time, that's all I've got to say. Now, Mr. Feeney, take it easy. Take it easy, you say. Take it easy. Indeed, Sheriff Turner. I'm wakened from sound sleep by a hundred gunshots, by men running right beneath my window, and I'm told to take it easy. Now, Feeney, listen to me a minute. Who was shot? Reed Arnes. Huh. Small loss. Was he killed? Yep. Drilled through the head. You know who did it? I thought you might know someone that had reason to gun breed on as, uh... Has he ever spoken about enemies? No. The only thing we ever discussed was money. How much he wanted to borrow when he'd pay it back. I see. Sorry I can't help you, Sheriff. Now, if you leave, I'll get back to bed. Yeah, all right, Feeney. Sorry I had to trouble you. Good night. Good night. Ranger hadn't stopped to remove his disguise. Riding at top speed, he raced north toward the scene of the fire. Dan and Tonto recognizing Silver's thundering hoofbeats. With Dave, they were on their feet to meet their friend. Oh, Silver, oh. He's, no, he's enough. disguised as a Mexican. What matter, Kimosabi? Is someone chasing you? Now listen to me. Time is short. Dave, you said that a woman in Omaha owned this land. That's right. Her name, quickly. Sarah Parva. She lives on Main Street. Why? The sheriff's men come here. Don't mention Breed Arnes. Why not? Because he was murdered. The law is looking for someone with a motive. What, Pat? But I can prove that I was here. prove that you didn't send me to get him for you? Oh. I don't mention Arnes. I'll be back by daybreak. Where are you going? To the town of Stockton, Dan. There's a telegraph office there. I've got to send a message to Omaha, to Sarah Parvis. Monsilver! Silver! 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. True to his word, the Lone Ranger was back in camp at daybreak. He once more wore his familiar clothing and his mask. He inquired about Pug Wilson. Him be all right soon. Him plenty tough. Well, what about the sheriff's posse? We haven't seen anything of them. The ground's hard. Maybe they can't follow my tracks. Did you find the telegraph office? Oh, yes, Dan. The operator didn't like being wakened, but he sent my message to Sarah Parvis. You better saddle up and ride to Stockton. I? Yes, the reply to my message will come in your name. Oh, when you get the reply, ride to Gillespie. I'll be watching for you near the edge of town. All right. Are you going to Gillespie this morning? Yes. I will stay here with Pug. You're uh, going to call on Feeney, aren't you? Yes. All right, go ahead, Roberts. But don't mention Breed Arnes. I won't. The woman in Omaha replies as I expect. I'll call on Feeney after you've seen him. I didn't expect to see you so soon, Roberts. I assume you've come to tell me that you found gold, huh? No, Mr. Feeney. No? We had some bad breaks. Bad breaks, huh? Someone set a blast and closed our tunnel. Shot Pug Wilson and set fire to our shack. Ah, that's quite a story. Well, do you think I made that up? The long and short of it is you don't expect to get the gold, am I right? Look, Mr. Feeney, we need more cash. Our tools were inside the tunnel. We need some men to dig while Pug Wilson's laid up. We Robert, need you needn't go on. They, Roberts, they... when you came to me with the proposition, you had an estimate of the cash you'd need. Yes, but... We I... made a deal. I gave you the amount you required on your assurance that it would be sufficient. You didn't give me what I asked for. You cut it down. You said you would get along with what I gave you. But Mr. Feeney, I... I'm not interested in the reason why you have not made good. But the goal is there. Pug Wilson said we were almost to the pay dirt, and he knows. If we have some... Maybe tools... you'll have better luck next time. <sighs> But you have half interest in what we find. Aren't you interested in that? It's a matter of business and principle, Roberts. I set aside a certain amount for the project. I'll spend no more. I tell you, there is gold. Good day, Mr. Roberts. All right, then. If you won't help me, I'll find someone who will. What's that? Lucky Thornton is Pug Wilson's friend. He'll loan us what we need. Read your contract. I have the exclusive right to finance the undertaking. No one else may invest either time, effort, or money without my permission. Do you mean to say I can't ask Thornton for help? That's it. Of all if you dirty... become involved in debt, I'll be held responsible. I don't propose to have this man Thornton come to me to collect for work done. You act as if you didn't want us to find gold. I'll be delighted if you find gold. But you'll have to do it without further expense, and you'll have to do it within the month. That chance. Good day, sir. Good day. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Couldn't have planned it any better. Feeney. Uh, who? I'm letting at the window for your young friend to leave. Masked. Keep your voice down. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, who are you? I saw Breed Arnes killed. You did? Well, what of it? Why come to me? You killed him. That's not true. Ask the sheriff. Ask anyone. Arnes was shot by... I know by... what everyone thinks. I also know the truth. I was standing across the street when you fired from that front window. No, no. Don't lie to me, Feeney. You can't prove you a thing. You want to make sure of your aim. You rested your gun on the window. Look here, Feeney. There's a powder burn on the windowsill. Fresh burn. <laughs> 
That's not sufficient proof. Wait till the sheriff learned that Arnez shot Pug Wilson, destroyed that tunnel. What? Pug Wilson saw him. Young Roberts didn't say anything about Arnez. He didn't realize that you were the one that hired Arnez to do that job. Suppose the sheriff does know that Arnez shot Wilson. How does that prove I shot Arnez? You shot him for two reasons. You didn't want him to talk, and you didn't want to pay him for his attack on Roberts and Wilson. Ah. Just a minute, Feeney. You're thinking that it will be impossible to show any reason why you'd want to hurt Roberts and Wilson. With half interest in whatever they discover, I'd hardly pay a gunman to interfere with their work. Oh, yes, you would. You would! You would, Feeney. Because you'd prefer being the sole owner of that gold-bearing land. What do you mean? Roberts finds a gold and takes up his option. You'll have half interest. If he fails, you will take up the option you hold. Yeah. Option I hold? Here. Read this message from Omaha. From Sarah Parvis. Where did you get that? He says, impossible to consider proposition. Second option on land already sold to Simon Feeney. Oh, what about that, Feeney? Why, why are you telling me all this? Why did you come here? If the sheriff had the evidence I've shown you, he'd make a case that would hang you. What do you think Roberts would do if he knew these facts? He'd probably try to blackmail me for more money. Oh, I doubt that. He'd go to the sheriff... He'd rather lose that land than let you get away with murder. What do you want? I know the truth about the Arnez murder. Should be worth something to you to suppress the truth. And your silence is a matter of money? Quite a bit of money, Feeney. How much? A lot more than you saved by shooting Arnez. But not as much as you'd make by cheating Dave Roberts. See how much is in your safe. Dave reached camp after his unsatisfactory trip to town. He found Pug Wilson seated on the ground with his back propped against a tree. When the tough old prospector heard about Feeney's decision, he bristled with resentment. I'll show that tight-fisted skin, Flint. No, no, you not get up. Uh, let me at that caved-in tunnel. No, no, you keep quiet till wound all heal. Tallow knows what he's talking about, Mr. Wilson. I'll show Feeney that I know gold signs when I see him. Give me a hand, Dave. Help me up. You're crazy galoot. Stay where you are. Our tools are gone. I'll move them rocks with my bare hands. Pug, listen to me. If you'll stay here, I'll try to move those rocks. Good. I'll work with you. We'll cut some branches and make well, them never. You sit here. And... Dan and Tonto help. Well, if you'll help, the four of us can no, do it. No, no. You work and we not work. You stay quiet. We help Dave. Mm. That's it, Pug. Dan and Tonto can be as much help to me as you'd be. Well, considering my condition, maybe you're right. But I'm going to sit close and watch. <laughs> Tossing these stones aside doesn't mean a thing. Keeps Pug Wilson quiet. Oh, let's rest him. Uh-huh. Now, we need powder, maybe machinery to move big stones. I know it, Tonto. We haven't a chance. I'm licked. As soon as Pug can travel, we'll move on. Golly. Say, Dan, what was in that telegram that came from Omaha? Well, I, I can't tell you. What? What? I'm sorry, Dave. The masked man asked me not to tell you. Who is he? Why did he plan to call on Feeney? I can't tell you anything. You'd better ask him when he gets back. Where's the man in there? Why are you stopping work? Move them doggone stones. Dave, look. Here he comes. Sure enough. Hey, look at him travel. Ah, uh, and plenty fast. Maybe him fetch news. Oh, Silver, ho. Oh, easy, silly boy. Easy. Watch out. Hey, what's the big hurry? I'm going over the hill for the help you need. Not Lucky Thornton? Yes. No, no, we can't ask him. Uh, we won't ask no favors. He'll be paid for what he does. With what? You don't understand. I've got a contract. I know about your agreement with Feeney. Dan. Yes? You're to take a message to Simon Feeney and Gillespie. Deliver it tomorrow at noon. All right. What's the message? I mean, you'd better get here by sundown. Dave Roberts has something to show him. Right. When you're in town, hand this note to the sheriff. Is that all? That'll be enough. Come on, Silver. Though Dave and Pug were bewildered at the masked man's aggressive action, they spent the rest of the day and part of the night in a discussion with Dan and Tonto. All four tried without success to decide what lay behind the Lone Ranger's move. Dan delivered the message in town. The sheriff and two deputies rode to the camp. A few minutes later, Simon Finney arrived in a light wagon. Ho, ho, ho there, ho. What are you doing here, Sheriff? Yeah, I was just asking Pug Wilson a few questions about the trouble here the other night. What's it to you, Feeney? Uh, what are you doing here? That young man brought me an impertinent message. I assume you sent it, Roberts. 
What do you mean by saying that I'd better be here by sundown? Was that a threat? No, it uh, wasn't a threat. At least I don't think it was. You wait. There come two fellow over hill. There he comes. Ask that masked man why you're here. Masked man? Dave! Dave, look at who's riding alongside him. It's my old partner, Lucky Thornton. Why is he coming here? <laughs> Roberts, if you've called on him Please, for help, you know you'll as go... much about it as I do. Oh, so, oh, 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 oh. Hey there, Lucky, you old maverick. Port Wilson, you spavin' old blister. Come here and shake hands. I'm tied up to this here tree so I can't get up. <laughs> you old horn toad. Why, you triple twisted sidewinder. <laughs> hey, got you down at last, huh? Yeah. I thought your hide was too tough for a bullet to dent. <laughs> What's the matter? You getting sore? Oh, it ain't the bullet that's got me down. It's that engine. He's making a sissy out of me with the care he gives me. <laughs> so you finally had to call on me for help, huh? Well, where's that tunnel we got to bust open? There's a tunnel, Thornton. Well, see here, you can't work on this land. <sighs> Who's the weasel face? I'm half owner. You're in charge, ain't you, Roberts? Yes. But he ain't... Shut got... up. <laughs> There's a man that can tell him. Roberts, <laughs> masked man gave me an idea what we'd need for this job. My wagons are on the way. Your wagons? I'm bringing machinery, tools, powder, and supplies. I'm also bringing men enough to work around the clock. We'll see that you get your gold. You can't do it. Sheriff, I'm glad you're here. Take this agreement. Read it. Thornton can't work here. No one can finance his job except me. Just a minute. Beanie, when I was in your office yesterday, you gave me this bundle of cash and this check on your bank account. Didn't you? Well, I... Isn't this your signature? Uh, yes. Why did you give me this money? Why, uh, you know... Uh, What's the matter, is... Feeney? Well, I, uh, Is I... this money to pay Thornton for his work here? Oh, well, I, I... What else could it be for? Uh, yes. Yes, I guess it is for this job. Then Thornton can go ahead without violating your agreement with Roberts and Wilson? Uh, yes. Well, of all the clever... <laughs> go to it, Lucky! Oh, wait. One thing more. Sheriff, here's a telegram from Omaha. This shows why Feeney doesn't want Roberts to succeed. Why, you... Reed Arnez shot Pug Wilson. And you can prove that Feeney killed Arnez. You double-crossing coyote! Feeney did! The boy here brought your note, so I savvy the whole thing. Feeney, you're under arrest. He's guilty, too. He's an accessory after the fact. He took money from me. Feeney, you just told everyone what that money was for. It's to pay the men who go after the gold. That's right. You said so yourself. It's too bad you'll hang before you can collect your share of the claim. I won't be taken alive. You won't hang me. Hey, stop him. Get him. Let me stop him. Stop. That's Good the work. Stop, Tonto. Good for you, Tonto. Golly, Tonto, you knocked him out. <clears throat> Is the critter still breathing? Uh, him live to hang. Uh, too bad it couldn't have been me that hit him. I'd have made it permanent. <laughs> Dan, Tonto, I wait for you in the valley. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Hey! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.